Here is Holistic Harmony Javi, your Holistic Peak Performance Coach. It's a great day to be grateful. Can't wait for this live. This one's really near and dear to my heart. The breath has been something that has completely transformed my life, or rather, deepening my relationship with the breath. Because we all have a relationship with the breath, just like we have a relationship with everything. But we don't really have the best relationships with food, with ourselves, and the breath is something that you do every single moment of every day. And so for me, when I started repairing my relationship with the breath, everything took off after that. And so I'm super excited to have somebody that really catapulted me on my journey with healing my relationship with the breath and a living legend. His name is Devon. We're going to go ahead and add him so he can share some of his infinite wisdom. And we're going to go ahead and wait for him to go ahead and join. My brother. Hello there, brother. How you doing, man? Electric and <laughs> invigorated. As always, under the pyramid, I see. Always. Oh, man. So I want to introduce you, Devon, to everybody. So for those of you guys that don't know Devon, Devon is the founder of Alchemy Breathwork. And he can tell you a little bit more about what that means to him exactly. But... This is a revolutionary type of breath work that is really just incorporating the teachings of Nikola Tesla, the teachings of the Tao, and really the life experiences that have brought Devon to this place. And it has transformed so many lives. It's transformed mine. It's transformed the lives of all the people in the alchemy group, alchemy breath work group that we're in. And so Devon here is a li living legend in my eyes. I'm super excited to have you here, Devon. As always, my man. Welcome, Thank welcome, you, brother. Thank you. Kind words. Thank you so much. Yeah, so <laughs> what alchemy means to me is um, literally turning every breath into gold. And uh, the more we turn every breath into gold, you know, our lives in that vision is gold. It's not, uh, it's not any other thing in that aspect. And the deeper you can accept that the the deeper you have that relationship with life overall and that's what alchemy breathwork is about utilizing mm. the breath in everyday life mm. and and i love how you touched on breath and gold because we're going to talk about how the breath is actually the currency but we're going to save that for a little <laughs> bit later because that's you know what i mean it gets a little spicy around then but before we really dive into it devon i would love for you to lead us through a quick breath of whatever you like. I mean, you have so many different modalities, whatever you feel is most needed right now, just a quick one, just to drop us in, get us all on the same wavelength, and then we'll we'll go ahead and get into the talk after that. All right, cool. So I want everyone to have their eyes gazing up at their third eye and this middle center. And this middle center right here, out of your whole entire face, you know, you can see which part of your face is part of different organs, but something about the middle it's not related to any organ. And that's what uh, is really interesting about this middle center. So when you're putting pressure into the middle, you're also putting pressure on the quote unquote holographic universe that connects mm -hmm. in terms of the pineal gland. Right. That sits the in corpus the pellosa, <laughs> all of it. Every, yeah. Everything's connected in that sense. And then you want to have your tongue pushed on the soft palate. So this is a soft palate. You want to curl your tongue back push on the soft palate. And then for every exhale, I want you to squeeze everything you literally use a bathroom with. Mm, your pelvic floor. Yes, your pelvic floor, your anus, your penis, your vagina, everything, <laughs> everything. Word. All right, we're gonna yeah. be, and we're gonna be doing, you're gonna hold that the whole entire time and every exhale really squeeze. And uh, we're gonna be doing um, regulars in threes. What I mean by that is we're gonna take an inhale and then we're gonna exhale. <laughs> so it's uh, stoppages on the exhales and that creates a vibratory resonance. Think of muscle fibers and you're literally sending a path in terms of those muscle fibers within your, within your nasal cavity. And then uh, afterwards, you know, it's a nice ripple effect afterward because those muscle fibers start to heal up a little bit and as you breathe in normally afterwards, it literally, literally follows a path that you created within those muscle mm -hmm. fibers when you do that. So another, another, uh, another plus about it is you're also building up more nitric oxide versus mm. mouth breathing. 
So right, I do. And we'll talk this. about that as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, we're gonna be doing three three breaths each, and then on the on the third breath, we're gonna just regulate the breathing, and then I'll say round two. Then we go for another round. And when I say regulate the breathing, I want you to breathe where you can't hear the breath. Deep inhales, deep exhales, deep inhales, only with the nose still, your eyes still gazing. And then I'll say round two, and then we'll get into it again. All right. All right. So eyes gazing, tongue on the roof of the mouth. We're going to start in three, two, one. Let's go. <laughs> Regulate the breath. Round two, let's go. Regulate the breath. Final round, let's go. Regulate the breath. Thank you all for sharing the breath. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, Thank you, Yvonne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting high on your own supply. Yes, Literally. sir. So, Yvonne, let's talk about the breath, man. It's honestly the pinnacle of health. So a lot of people think that when it comes to health, diet and exercise are number one. But even if you work out an hour a day, that is 4% of your day, and you're eating, let's say, three hours a day, that's still only 12% of your day, but you're breathing 100% of the time. And so breathing is something that's so crucial and yet so underlooked. And I'm curious as to why you think we've lost this relationship with the breath. What, what has, has kind of sparked that almost? That's a deep, 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 deep topic. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of, what, what sparked it? Um, but I'll go in on the main consensus and what we're all living in, in terms of the mm -hmm. society. It's the external things that we look for and diving into external powers to mm -hmm. have some type of effect on this body. Mm -hmm. That's, that's where we went uh outside mm -hmm. of our internal and our inner world and our inner power when it comes to the breath mm -hmm. you know when mm -hmm. when uh when eve ate that apple <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so it's so it's that it's that separation so because we found ourselves separate from life itself from the universal breath right and we thought ourselves to be separate that kind of created a schism with our with our alignment with our own breath and so that that makes a lot of sense. Right. It so makes a lot of sense. So going back to um, eating the apple, you know that many many scientists attest to this that uh, there were bigger trees back then. There were bigger mm -hmm. 
uh, bigger quote unquote forests back then. When you look at a mountain, I look, when I look at a mountain, I don't really see uh, just rocks. You know, some people say some some scientists in the field say they used to actually be trees. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes you really really wonder of how the air quality was uh, so potent and powerful back then. You instead of eating a mushroom, you could just mm -hmm. stand next to a mushroom and, and absorb it. Psychedelic experience right. doing the breath work because of the mm -hmm. the uh, the pheromones that the mushroom uh, yeah, produces the in the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you That's go. fascinating, man. That's fascinating. And and what's really interesting to me, Devon, is this entire fiasco with COVID being a respiratory illness and. And, and I always pay attention to the collective psyche and the collective psychological almost approach. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we had during the, the height of the COVID lockdown, people marching around in, in, in droves in, in, in the thousands screaming, I can't breathe, I can't breathe while wearing a mask, you know, further affirming their suppression of the breath because it's that powerful. Mm. And so that's something that I really noticed. I was like, it's interesting that the breath can sustain us and despite all the ways that we damage ourselves the breath is what allows us to continue going and it's so powerful that and, and there seems to be a an attack on the breath and that's why i think the work that you're doing the work that we're doing is so important because it's bringing people back to to within i mean the the breath itself is spirit can you speak on that at all man mm, so going back to the whole covid thing as well now they're saying it's having psychological issues as well. They're trying, they're, they may actually do this soon where they're going from quote unquote respiratory to more psychological because they're mm -hmm. seeing that there's a long-term effect psychologically wise. And I wonder what, what that is. You know, when you, when you look at trauma itself and uh, suppression of the breath, you know, traumatic states, near death experiences, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been through at least like five in my lifetime. And mm -hmm. uh, when I got deeper into the breath, uh, some of those experiences would reoccur to me. And I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know. So you would be reliving them almost. Reliving them moments, yes. Wow. In, in a sense, because the trauma is stored in the body. You know, this, this mm -hmm. is these, these, uh, these uh, organs that we have are more than just. Uh, physical, if you will, you know, they, they all make a different sound in synapsis. If I were to cover the sound of the heart, if I were to cover the sound mm -hmm. of the pulsations um, mm -hmm. within your brain and uh, your quote unquote pineal gland, because it, it does right. everything in your body literally pulsates. And that was my big awakening mm -hmm. when I could mm -hmm. feel different parts of my body. Like I can be still. Mm -hmm. I know what my liver feels like. I know what my gallbladder wow. feels like. I know what when I look up, gaze up at my third eye, I can feel that electricity just go up and down, mm -hmm. up and down, up and down. You know, we're electric beings in that sense. And even going to the, the ears, the ears itself is such a powerful tool that when we're hearing things like, I can't breathe and, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and things of that nature reaffirming because the body doesn't know the difference. So when, right. you, when you keep exactly. on hearing that, it's having an effect on you, you know, they've, mm -hmm. they've done interesting research where people are quote unquote, even before Hollywood became what it is today, you yeah. know, before that, there was so many, so much research in terms of TV, tell your vision, um, mm -hmm. on how it, how it reacts to the human body and things of that nature, stress levels, cortisol levels, so mm -hmm. many different stress factors when it comes to watching another person if you will, mm -hmm. because the body really doesn't know the difference. And it goes, mm -hmm. the deeper I got into breath itself, you know, it brought up the question of uh, who is watching the observer? Right. Mm -hmm. Who is watching the observer at that, at that point in time? Because if the breath is so multidimensional, which it really is, because when you sleep in your dreams, you're breathing. So what does that tell you? If you're breathing in your dreams and it's somewhat harmonizing with you in the physical, in a sense, it goes to show that the breath is literally the string that attaches multi dimensions onward. Mm, I love that. That's yeah. That's why it's so powerful, man. And it's it's just so fascinating how it's all playing out. And so I'm curious to know, kind of, 
how I would love for you to speak more on the bodily awareness, because this is something that I think a lot of people are lacking is this 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 feeling of being at home within their body where they can shift their awareness like you could very easily close your eyes and or not even close it but you could bring all your awareness to your to your pinky for example and can feel the entirety of that pinky and like the pulsation behind it and that's such an incredible superpower because you can now start to tune in and tune everything else out and really find out what it is like so whenever you find yourself in a state of overthinking or or anything that's really being in the past or the future and dropping into the body gets you out of the mind but you can't necessarily drop into the body if that electricity isn't there to charge and so for a lot of people that are eating you know heavy oil foods it basically almost covers the tissues in the cells to the point where they can't receive an electrical charge through the breath or even through the electric foods that exist and so the breath is is the most electric electric thing and, and how it infuses oxygen into the blood cells and it, and it gets the circulation it's super powerful but i would love for you to speak a little bit more on just bodily awareness and how increasing your relationship with the breath increases your relationship with your body and your awareness of your body so what's in air you know this i wrote this in my first book what's in what makes up air uh so many different things and one of the main things that really sparked my interest with air itself was argon argon mm -hmm. is one of the most abundant gases known right. to humankind yeah. argon it's a noble gas it's a noble mm -hmm. gas and what does argon sound like it sounds like organ like organ energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good point so so if we were to if this was quote unquote the matrix and let's say argon was a bunch of threes and, and zeros if we were to see all of that right now in the in in our dimensional reality we literally see a bunch of three zero three zero three zeros and how so close they're attached to each other mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we're as human as all living beings on this planet is are they're used to uh they're they're uh <laughs> we're all used to being within that gas if you will in the mm -hmm. in the firmament in that sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so going back to the body as above so below right. if we're all used to the external gases and we're mm -hmm. not used to the internal gases in terms of that connectivity mm -hmm. in terms of electricity in itself is right got electric in itself you can go look right. at this this isn't woo woo <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so when you connect more with the breath, you can feel how different things in your body digest. Like for me, mm -hmm. uh, the deeper I got into the breath, uh, the more I could feel what um, uh, peanut butter, for instance, would right. do, <laughs> nice. do to my body. <laughs> and that's, that's the, the time when I was really increasing uh, the breath work and diving into it even more and more there was one morning i literally woke up and i really felt how heavy that peanut butter um smoothie mm -hmm. was on my body now i was like whoa no more <laughs> mm -hmm. no more i had to cancel so many things because i really felt it that day and i'm yeah, like man that, that's a real drug that is a <laughs> real drug it really yeah. is and yeah. all, all foods technically are drugs, you know, but you want right. the healthiest quote unquote drug and, and right. Th right. that drug quote, beco uh, becomes quote unquote medicine. And mm -hmm. you want electric medicine closest to the breath. Cause when you go on healthier exactly. alkaline exactly. Um, foods, that's what mm -hmm. it's doing. It's allowing the body to digest at a faster rate for sure. Mm -hmm. And if it's digesting at a faster rate, it's harmonizing closer to balancing the pH in the blood. And I was talking about this right. earlier, that the primary thing to actually balance the pH in the blood is actually the breath. Everything right. comes right. second, down to water, mm -hmm. down to food itself. Yep. Everything yep. is secondary. Breath is the primary tool mm -hmm. to regulate the pH in the blood. And all these um, medicinal things that we know of literally try to quote unquote replicate that to quote unquote mm -hmm. get you to breathe a certain way um yeah. just like with ganja smoking ganja it gets you in that slow pace 
Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm not going to negate that. It does help with anxiety to a certain extent, for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's what it's mm -hmm. really doing, getting you to try to breathe a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's amazing because as you're saying that, what's uh, coming to mind for me is that the the breath itself is the lightest of, of sustenance. Let's call it sustenance. It's the lightest of sustenance, and then it goes on. And then there's foods Light that work. are very, very dense. Yeah, exactly. There are foods that are very dense on one opposite end of the spectrum, like animal flesh, for example. It's very dense because the just the solar energy, the solar energy hits the plants, then the plants, you know, get eaten by the cows. And then and then so there's a big disconnection from that light energy. And then, of course, this the way that we are consuming animals with the factory farming and there's so much fear now that brings the light even now even lower because there's cortisol, there's acidic responses happening in the animal. And so for the people that are still eating animal products, that is why they feel so lethargic. It's interesting because in the standard American diet, people have just accepted that being tired is normal. And I even bought into that idea until I started to really deepen my relationship with the breath, deepen my relationship with lighter foods. And then once I started to have all this energy, I was just like, man, you don't have to be always tired. Like it's not, it's not just a part of being American. It's a part of the lifestyle that comes with the standard American diet. And so it's just super fascinating how when, when you really focus on repairing the relationship with the breath, everything else really follows because when you're truly sustained by the breath, everything else is almost a bonus. And so that is true abundance in, in and of itself, having more than you need. And if you always have the breath, then, then everything else kind of, you know, falls, falls in line, like you said. And so I think that's uh, really fascinating. I also want to talk a little bit about nasal breathing. So this is something that you have completely transformed my life with, man, and, and just posting about nasal breathing because it really helps hydrate you. And I'm, I talk to a lot of people and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm drinking a gallon of water a day. But, you know, they're peeing all the time. They still aren't feeling hydrated. And even though they're, they're drinking a lot of water, a lot of that is going towards the dehydrated foods that they're eating. And so it's not really hydrating them. It's just counterbalancing the damage that they're doing. And so the, the, the nasal breathing is super important because you lose a lot less water through your breathing through your nose than you do your mouth. And so for some people that are like, oh, I, I hate drinking water, but I need to get hydrated. I tell them, well, stop breathing through your mouth altogether. Duck in <laughs> your mouth when you go to sleep and watch the difference that it, that, it, that it has on you. Because if I hold up a mirror and I put my hot ass breath on the mirror, it's going to fog up, right? But if I do that with my nose, no matter how much I, it's not going to fog up because I'm not losing as much uh, water through my nose and what's really fascinating and, and it's so amazing bro because you're so ahead of your time you spoke about nasal breathing and nitric oxide so long ago and just now scientists are finding out that nitric oxide and the effect that it has on the blood is actually effective in fighting viruses like yep. coronavirus and, and it's yeah, fucking, totally, yeah. exactly and it's incredible and so i would love to hear just a little bit more uh, about nasal breathing. I know I covered a lot, but just you know, some nuances because you know I'm I'm at a certain frequency and you're at a different one, and so you're 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 getting different light codes, different information than myself. So uh, go ahead, brother. Nasal breathing. Talk to us. Tell us about it. So I want to add. You touched on many things I would already say. So I want to add on top of that that eight, so things many people don't even realize. Eighty percent of taste. 80% of your quote-unquote taste is actually from mm. your nose, the senses yeah. within your nose. There mm. are more sensory organs, uh, sensory nerves, actually. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat that. There are more sensory nerves in your nose than your actual taste buds in your whole mouth. Mm -hmm. in your mm. whole mouth. That's why, let's look at animals, like, like heightened senses with animals. They can smell you from a far away. They can, they, <laughs> they, they can, they, when you, when you come inside, they're like, oh, oh, you were with yeah. so-and-so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were with so-and-so. And, -so. and beyond smell itself, that is literally frequency technology in itself. That lets mm -hmm. you tap into different, be, beyond, uh, beyond the physical, psychological connection that is. Mm. Mm. literally so when it comes to the sinuses many people think the sinuses just go all the way up the nose but there's little sockets 
literally close to your mm -hmm. eyes as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you can actually breathe with your eyes. There's exercises with that. But uh, I, won't, I won't go too deep. <laughs> but <laughs> they, there's sockets within your sinuses. And that's why um, when you do something like nose drinking and clearing the sinuses mm -hmm. via that way, that's why you get all that mucus uh, coming out. It's not just coming all the way deep in your sinuses, all the way from down here or anything. It's literally mm -hmm. in the pockets of your sinuses. And you mm -hmm. want to clear that uh, to the point where it's producing healthy mucus. And I mean healthy mucus in the sense of it's producing the right amount where if you're sneezing hard, mm -hmm. there's no mucus coming out. When, when you're mm -hmm. doing the nasal uh, cleansing, and mm. many people, many people don't realize that. But uh, there, mm -hmm. there is a quote unquote right amount when it comes to mucus and protection in that sense. But going into mucus itself and nasal breathing, let's look mm -hmm. at mucus itself, how it's a sticky substance, correct? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if we're mostly breathing with a, with a mouth, there is some mucus that will get produced in that sense. But only so much of it can contain viral load if you will because you yeah. you you exactly. up the empty with viral load there's really yeah. not much exactly. there versus mm. the nose like i said there's more sensory organs uh sensory nerves actually right. through mm -hmm. your nose so when you're intaking inhale 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 the inhaling you will always inhale the right amount no matter how hard you breathe no matter how slow you breathe you will all always inhale the right amount when it comes to nasal breathing. There's, mm. you will always inhale the certain right amount of pressure within the mm. nostrils. And it's so perfectly designed that your body is saying, okay, sinuses on, sinuses mm. on. Versus as soon as mm. you're breathing with the mouth, those, some of those sinuses receptors turn off. Turn off, right. Oh, wow. And if we look at, if we literally were to split everything just like that. What's closer to the mm. brain? Mm. The nose. Exactly. The nose right. is closer to the brain. So the more you're breathing with the nose versus the mouth, mm -hmm. it'll help with cravings. It, it will help with mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. many, so many psychological things of that nature as well, because most of our trauma literally comes from the mouth. Yeah, eat, 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 eat. yeah go ahead. Yeah, I was going to just speak on that. It's really interesting because if you look at babies, for example, so some one thing that I really got into when learning about the breath was diaphragmatic breathing. And we have a question in the chat that we'll get to in a second. But diaphragmatic breathing is when you use the diaphragm to create more space. So now you're filling up your lungs. So, so let's say your diaphragm is pressed up against your lungs, and this is how you're breathing, right? When you breathe from the diaphragm, it creates a little bit more space. So now your lungs have this much space to really move, and you're including so much more oxygen. And one thing that's really interesting, if you look at babies when they're first born, their bellies are all the way out. They have that space, but the trauma when they go through different traumas, then that, that, that tightness in the stomach starts to take place and the, the thing gets shortened. And then eventually out of nowhere, they just start breathing just in their lungs. And that's the state that most, uh, most adults are really at right now in, is just breathing with their lungs and not breathing deeply with their diaphragm, mm -hmm. through, with their stomach, with their entire being, really pulling it from the very base of their spine, the perineum, which are the original eight cells that develop in us, which also mimics the seed of life, which I'm just throwing seeds out there for anybody to really research. I mean, it gets so much deeper than we can cover in this oh, one hour. Hey, man. <laughs> but but it's, it's just incredible because there's been so many moments where I have felt anxiety or have felt myself in somewhat of a depressive funk or just have seen other people really beat all of these, you know, negative emotions through empowering themselves with the breath. And so for anybody that's listening, really tapping into the breath is one of the if not the most the most important thing and it's interesting i i don't know if it was you that said it but you always come to mind with this and it's that everything we do in in life every single thing that we do is a distraction from the breath oh uh, yeah yeah that's that's the biggest conspiracy <laughs> <of it all. laughs> yeah everything we do is a distraction of the breath except for breath work meditation yoga because those are the least distorted activities because they focus on the breath. And following, and, the, and following your passion is one of them. Because right. it gets you to that heightened state where you're like, fresh air, man, yeah. Yeah, 
Exactly, exactly. And so um, I, I just wanted to touch on that. But we did have a question in the in the chat. And it said, what type of nasal cleanse do you recommend? So I'd love to answer this really briefly, and then just allow you to, to just add on and sprinkle of it, because I'm, I'm going to say the same thing that you would probably say. And that number one thing is going to be your own urine. So here's the thing, it's a little bit radical for a lot of people. But <laughs> Just like the water that is in coconuts, it's sterile, it's cellularly, cellularly structured, so too is our urine. It's sterile and it also is structured for us by us. And so we're it, almost it, like- It literally makes the distillers. air more electric. <laughs> it's incredible, it's incredible. And so using, because your urine has a naturally high pH, using that destroys the, the mucus and it breaks up the mucus uh, in, in the nasal cavity, in the sinuses. And then when you drain it, it allows the excess mucus to come out because the mucus is really just your body's response to try and protect the tissues from acids corrosing the tissues. And the acids get built up by incorrect breathing, the wrong foods, you know, eating heavier, dense foods. And so that's what I've experienced from just learning from you, learning from Grub from the Garden, Nick Caputo. Uh, just using your own urine is one of the best things that you can do in cleansing your sinuses and your, your nasal cavities. I'm curious to see if you have anything else to add, brother. Uh, you also want to mature it so it can, uh, that's, that's one of the best ways of doing it. Let it, let it mature for three days. I mean, literally just letting it sit there for three days, cover it up if you can. Let it sit there for three days and it's going to be more potent. Think of it as your body literally meditating. That's what it's literally doing mm. here. In, in stillness. And the body can mm. communicate a lot faster. And what urine really is as well, it's literally stem cells because they are cells mm. that are filtered through the kidneys that are not waste. And you can mm -hmm. literally find them in beauty products. Just type it in, mm -hmm. beauty products, urea. Hello, <laughs> where do you think it's coming from? That's where mm. the sewage system, we're making billions. I'm a key, I'm gonna say that again, billions. <laughs> With the beat. All that pee that you are that you are pissing down the toilet. Billions. Yeah. Pissing <laughs> so, your life away. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So you can have it there sitting there. And uh you can if if nasal drinking is too much for you at that point, you can literally just dip your hand into the aid uh, into the mature urine and go sniff. Or uh you can get one of these pens as well and put your age in there as well and sniff it and that helps cleanse mm -hmm. the sinuses as well but what i do as well is i'll have the age and i'll also put essential oils in there as well mm -hmm. um i don't recommend that for uh nasal drinking too much because that, that might be way too much um but mm -hmm. instead of instead of sniffing it in it's really potent and powerful because there's something about uh urine and quote unquote Orin, Chivambu, if there's anyone watching from different parts of the world, because I'm starting to get that now. So I want to say those different terms, because as many people might know it from different countries and cultures, right. which is more prominent right. than the US, because the US is the only, I'm gonna say that again, the US is the only country that have doctors, it's literally in fine print, where they're really not allowed to talk about uh, Orin, or uh, your, these types mm -hmm. of therapies. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's why uh, if you go to if you go to colonics and uh, you ask them, hey, can I put my urine in there? They said, no, that that goes against FDA regulations and stuff of that nature. But I'm like, it's my own body. Why can't I do it? They're going to they're going to mm. say, no, nope. it goes against FDA regulations. You can't do that. Mm. Yeah, if I uh, could, we have a couple questions. So I, oh, I want to okay, go yeah. up to. Do you guys, yeah, do you guys still experience heavy emotional release when doing breath work or have you gotten past that at this point? I would love for you to go say, first, Iman. Say, say that one more time. You cut it, cut in and out. Sure. Do you guys still experience heavy emotional release when doing breath work or have you gotten past that point? So in alchemy, we acknowledge that there is so many different stresses in life and uh, instead of being food connoisseurs, it's time to be breath connoisseurs and, uh, and alchemizing all these different situations with different types of, uh, breathing. You know, it really hit me a couple months ago where Jen had the, uh, LED lights on and I was like, oh, that's bad for you or whatever. And she goes, you do so much breath work already. I'm like, oh, 
now that I'm thinking about it, like that, that makes sense in terms of cellular regeneration. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of like emotional release, like there will be times where I will quote unquote, just tear up randomly, but I'm not like crying anymore. I, I used mm -hmm. to uh, for sure, the deeper I got mm -hmm. into it. Like my first two hour breathwork session, he had me, my Sifu had me fast for two weeks on liquids before wow. my very first two hour session. And that's when I was crying and laughing weirdly. I, I don't like to say weirdly, but I was laughing hysterically for no reason. Hysterically, yeah. Um, but there, there, there's always a reason in terms of the traumatic release, if you will. Uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, you might laugh in the midst of your trauma and be like, man, why was I so angry about that? Why was I so angry about mm -hmm. this? You know? Mm, yeah, no, I, I get that completely. So for me, I agree with you 100% in the sense that in the early days, there was definitely a lot of that. Um, at this point, it really is just bliss. At this point, all the breath work that I've done uh, just brings me to a state of gratitude, to a state of bliss. Uh, now, granted, I haven't done all forms of, of breath work because there are literally an infinite amounts. Because here's the thing, you can combine the breath with different body movements. You can, you can manipulate the inhales the exhales, the duration, the speed, the, the, the frequency, like the, you know, the, the in and out, like there's just so many different ways that you can combine the breath. That means that there's an infinite po amount of possibilities when it comes to, to, to actual breath work. And so there's no real way to experience all of them. Right. Unless you are the most high, in which case you are all of them, but that's, you know, we're getting a little, <laughs> we're getting a little too far, but, uh, I want to use this time, Devon, to really transition a little bit more into a little some 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 more personal stuff. So specifically with you, and for a lot of people that don't know, you have embarked on a journey towards healing, on a journey towards breatharianism. For those that don't understand, is essentially being self-sustainable on the breath and and on the lightest of foods. And so uh, I would love for you to to tell us how long has it been since the last time you ate some solid food. Uh, it's been almost a year and a half now, way over, way over that at this point. Uh, it's been since Ooh. July 7th, 2019. I went 100% liquids. And before then, I was, two, I was, I was 80% for two years yeah. uh, transitioning mm -hmm. to 100%. So, 100. so for anybody that wants to do the math, they can do the math. But that's over 400 days, right? Yeah, well, well over. Yeah. Well, well over 400 days. 400 days without any solids. And for a lot of us, that seems so far to us because we're just like, well, how do you do that? And, and I think it's important for people to realize that it is a journey and it is right. a process. And, and, and you had to go through some time of adjusting and preparing so that you can get to this point. And so now that you're at this point, you're looking to now take it a, a, a different level and, and go even deeper. And so I want to ask you about this dry fast that's coming up. I do want to answer one quick question that just came up and is, is fruit considered liquid? So water dense fruits are going to have a lot more liquid and a lot lighter. But if you want to consider them liquid, you have to chew them to liquid. And so that means really like if you're going to eat a banana, for example, really chewing it until it becomes completely liquid and it mixes with the saliva, which is also great because the saliva has digestive enzymes that then wake the stomach up to produce more digestive enzymes. And then so it, it gets processed a lot quicker. And so it depends on how you look at it. Uh, anything else to add bro, before we get into the, uh, the dry fast? Oh, no. We, yeah, we're good. No. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, so yeah, man, I, I, I would love to hear a little bit about the reasoning as to why embarking on the 30 day dry fast, you know, maybe some concerns that might have come up, what's been the reaction from the people in the community, maybe your family, those that you've told, have you received that resistance, like, oh, you shouldn't do that, like that kind of stuff. I'm curious to just know a little bit more about that journey. And define, or so, okay, so really quickly, so for those that don't know, a dry fast is the, the highest form of detoxification. That's when you're essentially fasting from pretty much all forms of food. You're not eating or drinking anything. So no liquids, no solid foods for a period of time. And so you've decided that you want to give it a shot with 30 days. And so once again, I'm curious, I want to open the floor up to how this came about, the, re the feedback that you received. Uh, any concerns that may be coming up, you know, the floor is yours, bro. Please tell us more about this. So uh, 
it's going to be 30 days until my birthday. My birthday is, uh, I don't know, maybe I might, maybe I won't, but uh, I'll probably break it with uh, maybe activated charcoal or coconut water, mm -hmm. one or the other. I love activated mm -hmm. charcoal. That's one of my favorite drinks at this point. Uh, mm. But uh, what got me into going into this, I've actually done this before. The only main difference is I'm in a relationship. Uh, that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. I'm interacting with more people. That's another one. Because right. at the time that I did it, I was secluded. This was way before I met you, too. So I was secluded, mm -hmm. for, I was secluded for a while. Uh, to myself for a good period of time before I went back into society, uh, if you mm -hmm. will. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, that's like the main difference. In terms of concerns, uh, there is no concern. So going into what sparked uh, me getting into this was I've been shooting around with uh, Alkaline Tyler, you know him. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, we've been, we've been playing ball from time to time. And every time I go play with him, like we'll be shooting up for hours and hours and I noticed I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't I didn't drink anything yet at this point. And I'm not I'm not tired, I'm not lethargic afterwards. Um mm. so that was a reminder to myself as well. It's like, yeah, I because people that um who's who've known about breatharianism for a while, they they all look at me and say, You're you're definitely at that point uh where you can just go. Go mm -hmm. in that point. So it's, I told I told myself, all right, then uh why not transition it into my birthday and bring some real powerful mm. intention uh, mm. into my birthday that way as well. Mm. Beautiful. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful sentiment, but way, great way to describe it. And I think it's important for the people to know that, you know, this isn't one of those things that you should try at home. I mean, once again, Devon has been over 400, close to 500, maybe more days on just liquids alone. And so his body is very accustomed to getting water even just through breathing just extracting the the, the water mass. that's in the air yeah and 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 gaining mass at the same time which is incredible which is insane and so honestly devon what i what i think that's interesting if you ever get to that point where you might start feeling a little bit lethargic on that you know 30 day you could easily go to a steam room for like a minute or two and do some deep breaths and feel hydrated <laughs> which is incredible yeah, and and I, I, you got that already, so you're already totally <laughs> stacked and ready to go. Yeah, and my Miami's a great place, but I also want to touch in even even on Wim Hof. People don't realize mm -hmm. Wim Hof is technically at that point. He doesn't acknowledge it as much, but he's technically part mm -hmm. of our uh, Breatharian uh, familia, if you will. Um, when he goes into mm -hmm. long expedited uh, runs into the ice, going wild. Not many people know that he actually drive fast going into it. So he can have that full mm. connection with his body and take it head on. Mm -hmm. So same thing mm. applies in, 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 my, in my state, but it's more of activating more of the parasympathetic. That's what I really focus on instead of the sympathetic. Yeah. sympathetic. Right, right, exactly. And so uh, what's interesting, Devon, so I was having a conversation with my sister and and – uh, I forget how you came up, but I said, yeah, I have a friend of mine who has been this many days just on liquids and and he's getting ready to do that. And she said something that um, that kind of triggered me even. And, and I, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts because she probably isn't alone in this in this thought. But she said that that was a form of an eating disorder. And it was yeah. interesting to me because uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. It was interesting to me because the relationship with food is already so skewed. So I'd say 99% of people are walking around with a food disorder, right? And and so, oh, yeah. you, like, um, you know what I mean? Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. I actually am bringing Nick on to, to this channel uh, in a couple weeks to talk about just uh, our, the topic is poison is the standard, which he literally, you know, wrote the book on. But we're going to talk a little bit about that. And so we'd love for you to chime in when, you know, if, if you're around at that time and, and just uh, drop in some knowledge for that one. But I would love to hear right now, Devon, you know, what your thoughts are when someone says that or mm. someone might come you're at going. you and be like, bro, that's a food. That's an eating disorder that you have. Like, that's not healthy kind of thing. You know, how would you respond? I think we lost you. Can you hear me? You know, it
Mm. Whatever mm. it is that you don't believe in terms of energy wise, it is a proven mm -hmm. aspect that stress is part of your mental thinking. And some people like many people, mm -hmm. most of the population, if they're sane, will acknowledge that stress is real, even though they can't see it, just like you can't see the Wi Fi, just can't just like you can't see the cellular reception going in and out. In terms of a food disorder, food disorder as well, you know, even getting into this point, it's definitely important to really build a healthy relationship with food. Because if you're always eating garbage, you know, you're going to feel like garbage. And that's going to affect mm -hmm. you mentally. So going into a fast, you know, you want to you want to have a, a regression, a, a progression, if you will, a progression mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. different types of fasting. And even yeah. with that, yeah. in terms of relationship with food, you know, before you intake anything, you have to say, is this healthy for me? Not many people mm. do that. And that's where mm. the disorder really starts because mm. you are doing self-sabotage if you know for a fact, oh man, I knew I shouldn't have ate that, but oh well, like, yeah. that's what yeah. you're communicating then, with yourself. Exactly. And the self-sabotage shows up in other areas of your life. And then, you know, people wonder why they can't, uh, they set this goal for themselves and they don't reach it. And it all starts with, with, uh, with really just the food because it's a connection with yourself. And so that's really fascinating when you put it that way, that the thoughts that are going on during this, and, and, and here's the thing, what comes up as well is that health is relative. Like you said, everybody's at different points along that detoxification pyramid or lifestyle. And most people being at the bottom on, on the standard American diet. And then above that is just being vegan or plant-based. But even that, has a lot of processed goods. And, and so a level above that would be whole foods plant-based. So that's like literally getting a cucumber, you know, chopping it up and doing whatever you want with it. But then above that is that raw foods. So taking now cooked out of the equation, now just eating raw foods, then going up a level higher are your fruits, you know, and then mono fruits. Then we have juices, mono juices, breath, you know, uh, all the way up to dry. And so, I really love what you what you mentioned on fasting and working your way up. But like you said, when someone asks, is this healthy for me? You have to understand where you're at. Exactly. You have to really understand where you're at and not jump all the way up. And so for a lot of people, they might see some of the some of your lifestyle and maybe even some of this conversation as problematic because they might think, oh, well, somebody will watch your live and then want to do a 30 day dry fast and they'll harm themselves. But at the end of the day, that's absolving the responsibility of that person and them taking action. And we can't we it's a slippery slope when we start to really put other people's reactions and how they respond to things and say that's your fault, because ultimately that takes power away from that person's choice or decision to do that. And so I think we really have to come to terms that everybody exists at their own vibration and everyone exists at their own frequency. And I love what you say about frequency, where it's just what you decide to do frequently. Like the reason that we're even on this live is because we value the breath and we do it frequently. And because we do it frequently, our frequencies are aligned, right? But if I was somebody who would just breathe out of my mouth and didn't really value my relationship with the breath, we would have never even came in contact. And the reason we became so close was because we were like, yo, breath work? We were like, breath work. We were like, word. And then, you know, and then we became really good friends as a result. And so it's, it's really, really powerful. I, I want to open up the floor for anybody that has questions because we're just getting ready to wrap up. Uh, Devon said a lot. We spoke about nasal breathing. We spoke about how COVID is really an attack on the breath and it's because the breath is so powerful that they want to suppress it with the masks with the because here's the thing if it was really about the health it's it's much more psychological than anything like you said because now we have people riding around in cars by themselves and i can't tell you how many times i see this by themselves <laughs> nobody else around with gloves a face shield and a face mask like it's purely psychological at that point and and that's the approach that I'm being called to really speak on it because I, I've gotten a psychology degree from one of the best universities in, in the country. And I'm looking at this more from the psychological perspective that it'll have on our society, on our mental health. And it's just unacceptable. And I can't be quiet anymore because 
It's, it's damaging the way that our children are growing up. And, and just like, we need our mouths and full faces to understand emotionally. And so I see it almost as an attack on our emotional intelligence, stopping us from really developing our uh, resonance with our emotion and being in tune with our emotions. Because if we can be in tune with them and learn to allow them to flow in and out, then we don't really, we, you know, we can't get distracted by these other things. And so I really want to open it up for any questions that anybody has so we can get, you know, some, some, some wisdom from Devon before, before we, uh, before we ascend out of here. <laughs> Kids, especially. Exactly. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's really crazy because now they're being stunted emotionally and they're not receiving those facial cues and the, and the facial recognition. And so growing up, uh, you know, it's, it's something that you see in kids that are autistic and the kids that are autistic, they have a very hard time really relating to others and picking up on those facial cues. So, so I might be like this and, and some person who is autistic won't be able to pick up on that facial cues and kind of tell that mm. I'm having somewhat of a reaction. And so as a result, they, they might, you know, they might, um, they might do something that could get them harmed. So, so it's, it's right. one of those things They might things even go that, to a, into a panic attack and starting to breathe like, oh, 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 like just like that and into that response. Exactly. And, and so if there's no questions either, man, um, I, I just, I want to make one last point about the mask. And some people make very generalized statements uh, that say, well, I, you know, you can just wear a mask like for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or, or it's just like, if I could wear a mask all day, if surgeons can wear masks all day, then why can't you? And I want to really emphasize that the way that you and I are breathing, Devon, is completely different than most people are really breathing. And when you develop that bodily awareness, you can feel when that breath is suppressed. And when it's suppressed, literally it feels like ants crawling on your skin and you want to get out. It's, it, it feels for me like my spirit wants to break out of my body because it's being suppressed. <laughs> right. And so it's very different. We're very, very different when it comes to, uh, you know, it, 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 exactly. That's, that's pretty much so the point. I, I, I do um, want to also interject as well and say that, you know, if, you, mm -hmm. if you're also breathing more efficiently as well, it's easier to breathe through the mask than someone who's doing all that mouth breathing in that aspect. I don't know if you saw the testimony. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm, gotcha. I think the there was a little bit of gotcha. Is in line, and that will help you. You know, you'll want to gravitate towards healthier foods. You want to gravitate towards healthier decisions in that aspect because you you connect to quote unquote. Mm -hmm higher mind rather than the lower mind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. And so it's, um, we're going to have to do this one again, man, because we're running out of time. And a lot of people have some really amazing questions. The, the connection was a little unstable at, at some point. So we're definitely going to have to do this again, man, because this, uh, we can get so deep into this topic. And, and I really do want to answer a lot of people's questions because we had one about uh, that uh, Lara who's in here and she's working with kids and she wants to start working, you know, and, and teaching them breath work. And so she wants to hear a little bit about anything that you have to say. Some, you know, other people are asking about, you know, where'd you get that pen? I, I think that one can be answered really quickly. Where did you get that pen that you were, um, that, that was uh, giving out uh, the mist? Can you hear me, Devon? 
Aroma to go. Mm. Mm. Seems like we're having some technical difficulties. Uh, we'll wait until Devon comes back to sign off officially. Devon, let me know if you can hear me, brother. Can you hear me? <laughs> um, you're coming in and out. Not sure that the connection might be might be off, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, and cut it off for anybody that's still watching. Do you hear? Do you hear us at all, Devon? Do you hear me at all? Yeah. All right. Well, Devon, I want to thank you for joining us, brother. I want to thank you for sharing your breath. I want to thank you for coming on to the live. I want to thank you for being here. And just deciding to come back to this earth and 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 <laughs> and remind us again of the power of the breath. It's it's incre it's incredibly powerful. It's changed my life. And for anybody watching, listening, I highly recommend you really start to deepen your connection with the breath because everything else will follow. Your relationship with food will heal. Your relationship with others will heal. Your relationship with yourself will heal. And so the breath really is the foundation. And so with that. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in and for showing up for yourselves because you're only here because you want to improve. You're only here because you want to show up as that best version of yourself so that you can continue to anchor in your specific light. And that wouldn't be possible without you making a decision like this to join our lives. So we really want to thank you and commend you for the work that you're doing and for showing up. And so you too, if you guys are interested, please go ahead and hit up my man Devon for some sessions. I got two left. I'm really sitting on them because I really want to get the most out of them. Um, we got two <laughs> sessions left. I'm going to hit you up soon, Devon, so we can get some of those sessions in. But definitely, once again, thank you, brother. I love you, my man. We'll talk soon. I love you, brother. Peace. Thank you all for Peace. sharing the breath. Just really briefly and then just allow you to, to just add on and sprinkle of it because I'm, I'm going to say the same thing that you would probably say. And that number one thing is going to be your own urine. So here's the thing, it's a little bit radical for a lot of people, but just like the water that is in coconuts, it's sterile, it's cellularly, cellularly structured, so too is our urine. It's sterile and it also is structured for us, by us. And so we're almost it, like- It literally makes the distillers. air more electric. <laughs> it's incredible, it's incredible. And so using, because your urine has a naturally high pH, using that destroys the, the mucus and it breaks up the mucus uh, in, in the nasal cavity, in the sinuses. And then when you drain it, it allows the excess mucus to come out because the mucus is really just your body's response to try and protect the tissues from acids corrosing the tissues. And the acids get built up by incorrect breathing, the wrong foods, you know, eating heavier, dense foods. And so that's what I've experienced from just learning from you, learning from Grub from the Garden, Nick Caputo. Uh, just using your own urine is one of the best things that you can do in cleansing your sinuses and your, your nasal cavities. I'm curious to see if you have anything else to add, brother. Uh, you also want to mature it so it can, uh, that's, that's one of the best ways of doing it. Let it, let it mature for three days. I mean, literally just letting it sit there for three days, cover it up if you can, let it sit there for three days and it's going to be more potent. Think of it as your body literally meditating. That's what it's literally doing mm. here. In, in stillness. And the body can communicate mm. a lot faster. And what urine really is as well, it's literally stem cells because they are cells mm. that are filtered through the kidneys that are not waste. And you can mm -hmm. literally find them in beauty products. Just type it in, mm -hmm. beauty products, urea. Hello, <laughs> where do you think it's coming from? That's where mm. the sewage system, we're making billions. I'm gonna I'm say that again, billions. <laughs> With the bee. All that pee that you are that you are pissing down the toilet. Billion. Yeah. Pissing <laughs> so, your life away. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So you can have it there sitting there. And uh, you can if if nasal drinking is too much for you at that point, you can literally just dip your hand into the aid uh, into the mature urine and go sniff. 
or uh, you can get one of these pens as well and put your age in there as well and sniff it. And that helps cleanse the sinuses as well. But what I do as well is I'll have the age and I'll also put essential oils in there as well. Mm. Um, mm. I don't recommend that for uh, nasal drinking too much because that, that might be way too much. Um, but mm. instead, mm -hmm. of, instead of sniffing it in, it's really potent and powerful because there's something about uh, urine and quote unquote orin, Shivambu, if there's any one watching from different parts of the world, because I'm starting to get that now. So I want to say those different terms, because as many people might know it from different countries and cultures, right. which is more prominent right. than the U.S., because the U.S. is the only, I'm going to say that again, the U.S. is the only country that have doctors. It's literally in fine print where they're really not allowed to talk about uh, Orin or uh, your, these types mm -hmm. of therapies. Mm. That's why uh, if you go to if you go to colonics and uh, you ask them, hey, can I put my urine in there? They said, no, that that goes against FDA regulations and stuff of that nature. But I'm like, it's my own body. Why can't I do it? They're going to they're going to mm. say, no, nope, it goes against FDA regulations. You can't do that. Mm. Yeah, if I uh, could, we have a couple questions. So I, oh, I want to okay, go yeah. up to. Do you guys, yeah, do you guys still experience heavy emotional release when doing breath work or have you gotten past that at this point? I would love for you to go say, first, Iman. Say, say that one more time. You cut it, cut in and out. Sure. Do you guys still experience heavy emotional release when doing breath work or have you gotten past that point? So in alchemy, we acknowledge that there is so many different stresses in life and uh, instead of being food connoisseurs, it's time to be breath connoisseurs and, uh, and alchemizing all these different situations with different types of, of breathing. You know, it really hit me a couple months ago where Jen had the uh, LED lights on and I was like, oh, that's bad for you or whatever. And she goes, you do so much breath work already. I'm like, oh, now that I'm thinking about it, like that, that makes sense in terms of cellular regeneration. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of like emotional release like there will be times where i will quote unquote just tear up randomly but i'm not like crying anymore i, I used mm -hmm. to uh for sure the deeper i got mm -hmm. into it like my first two hour breath work session he had me my sifu had me fast for two weeks on liquids before wow. my very first two hour session and that's when i was crying and laughing weirdly I, I don't like to say weirdly, but I was laughing hysterically for no reason. Hysterically, yeah. Um, but there, there, there's always a reason in terms of the traumatic release, if you will. Uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, you might laugh in the midst of your trauma and be like, man, why was I so angry about that? Why was I so angry about mm. this? You know? Mm, yeah, no, I, I get that completely. So for me, I agree with you 100% in the sense that in the early days, there was definitely a lot of that. Um, at this point, it really is just bliss. At this point, all the breath work that I've done uh, just brings me to a state of gratitude, to a state of bliss. Uh, now, granted, I haven't done all forms of, of breath work because there are literally an infinite amounts because here's the thing. You can combine the breath with different body movements. You can, you can manipulate the inhales, the exhales, the duration, the speed, the, the, the frequency, like the, you know, the, the in and out. Like there's just so many different ways that you can combine the breath that means that there's an infinite po amount of possibilities when it comes to, to, to actual breath work. And so there's no real way to experience all of them. Right. Unless you are the most high, in which case you are all of them, but that's, you know, we're getting a little, <laughs> we're getting a little too far, but uh, I want to use this time Devon to really transition a little bit more into a little, some, some, some more personal stuff. So specifically with you and for a lot of people that don't know, you have embarked on a journey towards healing on a journey towards breatharianism for those that don't understand is essentially being self-sustainable on the breath and, and on the lightest of foods. And so uh, I would love for you to, to tell us how long has it been since the last time you ate some solid food? Uh, it's been almost a year and a half now, way over, way over that at this point. Uh, it's been since Ooh. July 7th, 2019. I went a hundred percent liquids. And before then I was two, I was, I was 80% for two years yeah. uh, transitioning mm -hmm. to 100%. So 100. So for anybody that wants to do the math, they can do the math, but that's over 400 days, right? Yeah, well over, yeah. 
well over 400 days, 400 days without any solids. And for a lot of us, that seems so far to us because we're just like, well, how do you do that? And, and I think it's important for people to realize that it is a journey and it is right. a process. And, and, and you had to go through some time of adjusting and preparing so that you can get to this point. And so now that you're at this point, you're looking to now take it a, a, a different level and, and go even deeper. And so I want to ask you about this dry fast that's coming up. I do want to answer one quick question that just came up and is, is fruit considered liquid? So water dense fruits are going to have a lot more liquid and a lot lighter. But if you want to consider them liquid, you have to chew them to liquid. And so that means really like if you're going to eat a banana, for example, really chewing it until it becomes completely liquid and it mixes with the saliva, which is also great because the saliva has digestive enzymes that then wake the stomach up to produce more digestive enzymes. And then so it, it gets processed a lot quicker. And so it depends on how you look at it. Uh, anything else to add, bro, before we get into the uh, the dry fast? Oh, uh, no. We, yeah, we're good. No. <laughs> Okay, cool, 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 cool. So, so yeah, man, I, I, I would love to hear a little bit about the reasoning as to why embarking on the 30 day dry fast, you know, maybe some concerns that might have come up, what's been the reaction from the people in the community, maybe your family, those that you've told, have you received that resistance? Like, oh, you shouldn't do that, like that kind of stuff. I'm curious to just know a little bit more about that journey. And define, or so, okay, so really quickly, so for those that don't know, a dry fast is the, the highest form of detoxification. That's when you're essentially fasting from pretty much all forms of food. You're not eating or drinking anything. So no liquids, no solid foods for a period of time. And so you've decided that you want to give it a shot with 30 days. And so once again, I'm curious, I want to open the floor up to how this came about, the, re the feedback that you received. Uh, any concerns that may be coming up, you know, the floor is yours, bro. Please tell us more about this. So uh, it's going to be 30 days until my birthday. My birthday is, uh, I don't know, maybe I might, maybe I won't, but uh, I'll probably break it with uh, maybe activated charcoal or coconut water, mm -hmm. one or the other. I love mm -hmm. activated charcoal. That's one of my favorite drinks at this point. Uh, mm. But uh, what got me into going into this i've actually done this before the only main difference is i'm in a relationship uh, that's one mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. i'm interacting with more people that's another one because right. at the time that i did it i was secluded this was way before i met you too so i was secluded mm -hmm. for i was secluded for a while uh to myself for a good period of time before i went back into society uh, if you mm -hmm. will uh, mm -hmm. but um, that's like the main difference in terms of concerns. Uh, there's no concern. So going into what sparked uh, me getting into this was I've been shooting around with uh, Alkaline Tyler, you know him. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, we've been, we've been playing ball from time to time. And every time I go play with him, like we'll be shooting up for hours and hours. And I noticed, I'm like, Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't drink anything yet at this point. And I'm not, I'm not tired. I'm not lethargic afterwards. Um, mm. So that was a reminder to myself as well. It's like, yeah, because people that um, who's, who've known about breatharianism for a while, they, they all look at me and say, you're, you're definitely at that point uh, where you can just go, go mm. in that point. So I told, I told myself, all right, then uh, why not transition it into my birthday and bring some real powerful mm. intention uh, mm. into my birthday that way as well. Mm. Beautiful. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful sentiment, but a great way to describe it. And I think it's important for the people to know that, you know, this isn't one of those things that you should try at home. I mean, once again, Devon has been over 400, close to 500, maybe more days on just liquids alone. And so his body is very accustomed to getting water even just through breathing just extracting the the, the, the water mass. that's in the air yeah and 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 gaining mass at the same time which is incredible which is insane and so honestly devon what i what i think that's interesting if you ever get to that point where you might start feeling a little bit lethargic on that you know 30 day you could easily go to a steam room for like a minute or two and do some deep breaths and feel hydrated <laughs> which is incredible yeah, <laughs> and and I, I, you got that already, so you're already <laughs> stacked, ready to go. Yeah, 
And my, Miami is a great place, but I also want to touch in, even, even on Wim Hof, people don't realize mm -hmm. Wim Hof is technically at that point. He doesn't acknowledge it as much, but he's technically mm -hmm. part of our uh, Breatharian uh, familia, if you will. Um, when he goes into mm -hmm. long, expedited uh, runs into the ice going wild, not many people know that he actually drive fast going into it. So he can have that full mm. connection with his body and take it head on. Mm -hmm. So same thing mm. applies in, 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 my, in my state, but it's more of activating more of the parasympathetic. That's what I really focus on instead of the sympathetic. Yeah. sympathetic. Right, right, exactly. And so uh, what's interesting, Devon, so I was having a conversation with my sister and, and uh, I forget how you came up, but I said, yeah, I have a friend of mine who has been this many days just on liquids and, and he's getting ready to do that. And she said something that, um, that kind of triggered me even. And, and I, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts because she probably isn't alone in this, in this thought, but she said that that was a form of an eating disorder. And it was yeah. interesting to me because uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. It was interesting to me because the relationship with food is already so skewed. So I'd say 99% of people are walking around with a food disorder, right? And, and so, oh, yeah. you, like, um, you know what I mean? Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. I actually am bringing Nick on to, to this channel uh, in a couple weeks to talk about just uh, our, the topic is poison is the standard, which he literally, you know, wrote the book on. But we're going to talk a little bit about that. And so we'd love for you to chime in when, you know, if, if you're around at that time and, and just uh, drop in some knowledge for that one. But I would love to hear right now, Devon, you know, what your thoughts are when someone says that or mm. someone might come you're at going. you and be like, bro, that's a food, that's an eating disorder that you have. Like, that's not healthy kind of thing. You know, how would you respond? I think we lost you. Can you hear me? You know, it's whatever it is that you don't believe in terms of energy wise it is a proven mm -hmm. aspect that stress is part of your mental thinking and some people like many people mm -hmm. most of the population if they're sane will acknowledge that stress is real even though they can't see it just like you can't see the wi-fi just can't just like you can't see the cellular reception going in and out in terms of a food disorder, food disorder as well, you know, even getting into this point, it's definitely important to really build a healthy relationship with food. Because if you're always eating garbage, you know, you're going to feel like garbage. And that's going to affect mm -hmm. you mentally. So going into a fast, you know, you want to you want to have a, a regression, a, a progression, if you will, a progression mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. different types of fasting. And even yeah, with that, yeah. in terms of relationship with food, you know, before you intake anything, you have to say, is this healthy for me? Not many people mm. do that. And that's where mm. the disorder really starts because mm. you are doing self-sabotage if you know for a fact, oh man, I knew I shouldn't have ate that, but oh well, like, yeah. that's what yeah. you're communicating with yourself. Exactly. And the self-sabotage shows up in other areas of your life. And then, you know, people wonder why they can't, uh, they set this goal for themselves and they don't reach it. And it all starts with, with, uh, with really just the food because it's a connection with yourself. And so that's really fascinating when you put it that way, that the thoughts that are going on during this, and, and, and here's the thing, what comes up as well is that health is relative. Like you said, everybody's at different points along that detoxification pyramid or lifestyle. And most people being at the bottom on, on the standard American diet. And then above that is just being vegan or plant-based. But even that has a lot of processed goods. And, and so a level above that would be whole foods plant-based. So that's like literally getting a cucumber, you know, chopping it up and doing whatever you want with it. But then above that is that raw foods. So taking now cooked out of the equation, now just eating raw foods, then going up a level higher are your fruits you know, and then mono fruits, then we have juices, mono juices, breath, 
you know, uh, all the way up to dry. And so I really love what you, what you mentioned on fasting and working your way up. But like you said, when someone asks, is this healthy for me? You have to understand where you're at. Exactly. You have to really understand where you're at and not jump all the way up. And so for a lot of people, they might see some of the, some of your lifestyle and maybe even some of this conversation as problematic because they might think, oh, well, somebody will watch your live and then want to do a 30 day dry fast and they'll harm themselves. But at the end of the day, that's absolving the responsibility of that person and them taking action. And we can't, we, it's a slippery slope when we start to really put other people's reactions and how they respond to things and say, that's your fault. Because ultimately, that takes power away from that person's choice or decision to do that. And so I think we really have to come to terms that everybody exists at their own vibration and everyone exists at their own frequency. And I love what you say about frequency, where it's just what you decide to do frequently. Like the reason that we're even on this live is because we value the breath and we do it frequently. And because we do it frequently, our frequencies are aligned, right? But if I was somebody who would just breathe out of my mouth and didn't really value my relationship with the breath, we would have never even came in contact. And the reason we became so close was because we were like, yo, breath work? We were like, breath work. We were like, word. And then, you know, and then we became really good friends as a result. And so it's, it's really, really powerful. I, I want to open up the floor for anybody that has questions because we're just getting ready to wrap up. Uh, Devon said a lot. We spoke about nasal breathing. We spoke about how COVID is really an attack on the breath. And it's because the breath is so powerful that they want to suppress it with the masks, with the, because here's the thing, if it was really about the health, it's, it's much more psychological than anything, like you said, because now we have people riding around in cars by themselves. And I can't tell you how many times I see this by themselves, <laughs> nobody else around with gloves, a face shield, <laughs> and a face mask like it's purely psychological at that point and and that's the approach that i'm being called to really speak on it because i i've gotten a psychology degree from one of the best universities in in the country and i'm looking at this more from the psychological perspective that it'll have on our society on our mental health and it's just unacceptable and i can't be quiet anymore because it's it's damaging the way that our children are growing up and and just like we need our mouths and full faces to understand emotionally. And so I see it almost as an attack on our emotional intelligence, stopping us from really developing our uh, resonance with our emotion and being in tune with our emotions. Because if we can be in tune with them and learn to allow them to flow in and out, then we don't really, we, you know, we can't get distracted by these other things. And so I really want to open it up for any questions that anybody has. So we can get you know some 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 wisdom from Devon before before we uh before we ascend out of here. <laughs> Kids especially, exactly. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, it's just you know it's really crazy because now they're being stunted emotionally, and they're not receiving those facial cues and the and the facial recognition. And so growing up. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that you see in kids that are autistic and the kids that are autistic, they have a very hard time really relating to others and picking up on those facial cues. So, so I might be like this and, and some person who is autistic won't be able to pick up on that facial cues and kind of tell that mm. I'm having somewhat of a reaction. And so as a result, they, they might, you know, they might, um, they might do something that could get them armed. So, so it's, it's right. one of those things They might things even go that, to, into a panic attack and starting to breathe like, Oh, oh, oh. like just like that and into that response exactly and and so if there's no questions either man um i i just i want to make one last point about the mask and some people make very generalized statements uh that say well i you know you can just wear a mask like for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or or it's just like if i could wear a mask all day if surgeons can wear masks all day then why can't you and I want to really emphasize that the way that you and I are breathing, Devon, is completely different than most people are really breathing. And when you develop that bodily awareness, you can feel when that breath is suppressed. And when it's suppressed, literally it feels like ants crawling on your skin and you want to get out. It's, it, it feels for me like my spirit wants to break out of my body because it's being suppressed. Right. And so it's very different. We're very, very different when it comes to uh, 
you know, it, 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 exactly. That's that's pretty much so the point. I do, um, I do want to also interject as well and say that you know, if you mm -hmm. if you're also breathing more efficiently as well, it's easier to breathe through the mask than someone who's doing all that mouth breathing in that aspect. I don't know if you saw the testimony. Mm. Mm hmm mm hmm Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm, gotcha. I think the there was a little bit of gotcha. Is in line, and that will help you. You know, you'll want to gravitate towards healthier foods. You want to gravitate towards healthier decisions in that aspect because you you connect to quote unquote. Mm higher mind rather than the lower mind. Mm. Absolutely, man. And so it's, um, we're going to have to do this one again, man, because we're running out of time and a lot of people have some really amazing questions. The, the connection was a little unstable at, at some point. So we're definitely going to have to do this again, man, because this, uh, we can get so deep into this topic and, and I really do want to answer a lot of people's questions because we had one about, uh, that uh, Lara, who's in here, and she's working with kids, and she wants to start working, you know, and, and tr teaching them breath work. And so she wants to hear a little bit about anything that you have to say. Some, you know, other people are asking about, you know, where'd you get that pen? I, I think that one can be answered really quickly. Where did you get that pen that you were, um, that that was uh, giving out uh, the mist? Can you hear me, Devon? Aroma to go. Mm. Mm. Seems like we're having some technical difficulties. Uh, we'll wait until Devon comes back to sign off officially. Devon, let me know if you can hear me, brother. Can you hear me? <laughs> um, you're coming in and out. Not sure that the connection might be might be off, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, and cut it off for anybody that's still watching. Do you hear? Do you hear us at all, Devon? You hear me at all? Yeah. All right. Well, Devon, I want to thank you for joining us, brother. I want to thank you for sharing your breath. I want to thank you for coming on to the live. I want to thank you for being here and just deciding to come back to this earth and 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 <laughs> and remind us again of the power of the breath. It's it's inc it's incredibly powerful. It's changed my life. And for anybody watching, listening, I highly recommend. You really start to deepen your connection with the breath because everything else will follow. Your relationship with food will heal. Your relationship with others will heal. Your relationship with yourself will heal. And so the breath really is the foundation. And so with that, I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in and for showing up for yourselves because you're only here because you want to improve. You're only here because you want to show up as that best version of yourself so that you can continue to anchor in your specific light. And that wouldn't be possible without you making a decision like this to join our lives. So we really want to thank you and commend you for the work that you're doing and for showing up. And so you too, if brother. you guys are interested, 
please go ahead and hit up my man Devon for some sessions. I got two left. I'm really sitting on them because I really want to get the most out of them. Um, we got two <laughs> sessions left. I'm going to hit you up soon, Devon, so we can get some of those sessions in. But definitely, once again, thank you, brother. I love you, my man. We'll talk soon. I love you, brother. Peace. Thank you all for sharing the breath. Hey, conscious breathers and infinite beings alike. I'm here with Joe. This is also one of Hobby's clients that he's working with. And me and Hobby, we decided to work together on helping Joe. Joe, you want to share your experience? Yeah, yeah. So I've been working with Javi for almost a month now. And we're working, we're doing breath work to get me off of, to get me off of nicotine and to get me off of using THC. Uh, breath work is very important and I'm learning the importance of it more and more each day because it helps me work through trauma from my past and it helps me move it out of my body. Uh, this practice here with Devon was eye-opening and you can say that it was very <laughs> eye-opening and I am at peace right now. I have no sensation or no feeling of wanting nicotine and um, I'm gonna keep using his practices to carry me forward. All right, thank you all for sharing the breath, peace.